Hey guys, it's Dylan. So how Cuban got orange pilled and if you're new to Bitcoin, getting orange pilled just means you become a Bitcoin believer. And no, this is not my apparel, but it does explain down here where the saying came from. Basically the Matrix movie, the guy could either take the red pill or the blue pill. In this case, taking the orange pill is becoming a Bitcoin bull. And as we now know with Cuban's most recent $1 million bet with Peter Maluk, where he said, we set up an ETH smart contract. You being Peter put up $1 million in a stable coin. Mark will do the same. We write the contract to pay you if the increase in the S&P 500 is higher at the end date than the increase in your choice, Peter's choice of Bitcoin or Ethereum you can pick the custodian. So simply put, Peter puts up a million, Mark Cuban puts up a million, they put it into a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, and the coding and the programming language says that at the end of 10 years, if the S&P 500 performs better than either Bitcoin or Ethereum, then Peter will get the $2 million. And if Bitcoin or Ethereum outperform, then Mark Cuban will win the $2 million. And just FYI, they did make a second bet where they each put up another $1 million and Mark Cuban takes Amazon and Netflix split 50-50. Once again, Peter gets the S&P 500. Same deal, at the end of 10 years, whichever group of investments outperforms wins the $2 million. And real quick, a smart contract basically just eliminates that middle trusted third party in real world contracts. On the screen, you can see the example of buying a house on Ethereum where you can eliminate the lawyers and brokers. And then down on the bottom, it just puts it into a distributed immutable smart contract on the blockchain. And so a smart contract is just programmable code on the blockchain, making it immutable and distributed. So no one person can attack it, no one person can change that code, and it will execute automatically based on the code without that trusted third party. So we need to remember, Mark Cuban has not always been a Bitcoin supporter. As you can see, Bitcoin has no shot as a long-term digital currency, a quote from Mark. And he also said, it would be purely for entertainment value if he ever did jump on the bandwagon. Says, quote, I'd look at buying it, but more as fun. It's almost like buying and selling baseball cards. And then back in 2019, this article, Mark Cuban angers Bitcoin industry with anti-crypto propaganda. Saying that the cryptocurrency has no intrinsic value, he adds that you can't even enjoy it for its aesthetic qualities as you a painting or a trading card. And we all remember his banana comments. It's only worth what somebody will pay for. I'd rather have bananas. I can eat bananas. Crypto, not so much. Look, I can make a great argument for blockchain. There's a lot of applications and they'll be used, but you don't need public Bitcoin, BTC. You've got to be able to spend it, you know, because right now you still have to convert it for anything that you want. And as long as you have to convert it, you're still dependent on fiat. No matter what you say, Right. And I can trade bananas easier as a commodity than I can trade Bitcoin. But what Cuban said later in that interview was for him to change his stance. Bitcoin would need to be used easily almost everywhere. And although that hasn't happened yet, that'll happen down the road. If you look at these April highlights, you can see all of these things that have happened in the Bitcoin space where adoption is slowly gaining traction in many different places. And it really boils down to education. Cuban started talking to people like Pomp and watching what Elon was doing and started learning about NFTs. And now Mark and the Mavericks are using Dogecoin and Mark has NFTs of his own. So it's like, once you learn about the space and understand it, that light comes on and you get orange pilled and then it's all downhill from there. This is what's going to happen to millions of other people. It's not a matter of if, but when. And just real quick, so you know, Peter Maluk is actually a stud. He definitely knows what he's talking about and deserves some respect. So as you can see, he's the president of Creative Planning, named the number one independent wealth management firm in America by Barron's in 2017. They currently manage about $76 billion for clients in all 50 states. And he's actually a pretty solid Twitter follow. But to wrap this up, I'm gonna read you this prophetic quote from Thomas Jefferson, which is really mind blowing. And then I'm gonna show you a quick one minute video and then I'll catch you guys in the next one. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The issuing power should be taken from the banks and restored to the people to whom it properly belongs. Satoshi Nakamoto took the power from the banks and restored it to the people to whom it properly belongs. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. I was blind, but now I see. Can you characterize everything that the Fed has done this past week as essentially flooding the system with money? Yes, exactly. 
And there's no end to your ability to do that. There is no end to our ability to do that. Simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job.